All right, so if I was a brand new real estate agent, the question that I'm getting quite often recently is, what actually makes the most sense? Should I be a solo real estate agent at a brokerage, go do my own thing, figure it all out? Should I join a team? Or should I go solo and hire a real estate coach, Brandon, like yourself? Or is there a combination that you think makes sense? Well, so I wanted to spend some time to really unpack this because it's a question that seems to be coming up all the time. Every time I check my Instagram DMs, it seems to have another real estate agent who watches the content here on YouTube trying to figure out like, hey, what does actually make the most sense? And I understand why it would be that one would ask a question like this because you hate to invest a bunch of time, energy, and effort going down one path if you knew that there would be another path that would make a lot more sense. So let's dive in. I'm going to share my screen and we'll have a conversation about this. So where should a new real estate agent start? Solo versus team versus coaching. I'm going to share this through my own experience, both uh, being a new real estate agent, owning a brokerage, and now coaching real estate agents. I'm going to speak to this through that experience and through my own experience and what I have personally gone through and what I have seen through coaching other real estate agents uh, is the lens in which I'm going to communicate this message to you. So let's jump into this. I think the first thing we have to look at is understanding what really causes a real estate agent to succeed in the first place so that we can back into the path that makes the most sense. Number one is accountability, actions and behaviors. So this is vitally important. If a real estate agent is going to succeed to any uh, uh, level to which one person would deem successful, making 100, 200, 300, 800, a million dollars a year, accountability is always at the top of that chart. Number two is then training and coaching around sales skills specifically. Why sales skills specifically around all the different things you can coach on or train on? Well, here's what we know. We know that there's an abundance of training out there around how to be a real estate agent, the practitioner fill out this form, uh, fill out this contract. This is how you write in addendum. In other words, this is how you make the cookie. The question is, well, how do I get clients so that I can use these contracts in addendums? And so number two on the list for, for being a successful real estate agent certainly is how to go out there and generate business, how to, out there, how to go out there and convert leads into appointments, how to convert appointments into listings, and then how to service those clients or those listings so that they end up closing, helping the client get what they want so that you can get what you want, which is a commission check. Number three is just that, the client acquisition process. That's the third thing on the list that an agent needs to be successful. We're not talking about all the information out there about how to make cookies or be the realtor, be the practitioner. There's an abundance of that information. We're talking about how to go out there and build a system and a process that allows you to get new clients on a consistent basis. Number four is environment. What is the surrounding environment that a real estate agent has or does not have rather that will decide whether he or she succeeds? All the studies, all the research shows that environment is a big, big, big deal. So these are the four things. There's probably 400, but these are the four things um, that I believe that are at the forefront of what is required to help a real estate agent succeed. All right. So now with that information, that's the context. So with that information, let's first look at the solo agent at a brokerage by themselves. So they get licensed. We're not talking about an experienced agent here. We're talking about a, uh, an agent who is recently licensed who says to herself, okay, I've got these three paths I can go down. I can go down and be an agent uh, by myself at a brokerage. I can go join a team or I can be my own agent and hire a coach who can help me navigate this business. So let's talk about the pros 
of that solo agent going to a brokerage being on her own or his own. Well, the biggest pro with this decision or this path rather is profit margin. So depending on which brokerage you go down, going to be your own agent at your own brokerage, the margins in which you are going to net after you sell a house will be the highest if you are a solo agent by yourself at a brokerage. Now, every brokerage has different commission splits, but high level, what we're really talking about is, is being on your own. Those margins are going to be the highest. Now, the argument, and we're not talking about cons yet, but the argument that one would make against this pro would be, well, yeah, a hundred percent of nothing, Brandon, is still nothing, which I would agree. But that is a pro. If a real estate agent is going to be successful on their own at a, a, a at a brokerage as a solo agent, they're going to put more. They're going to net the net margin per transaction would be higher on a uh, the unit economics. Close one deal on your own at a brokerage versus closing one deal under a different model, which we're going to talk about in a second, that that uh, model being on your own at an own brokerage will be higher. Now, that doesn't mean the agent makes more money overall. It's just the unit economics. Number two is the entrepreneurial freedom to do what she wants, what he wants with their own business, to run the model the way that they want to generate leads the way that they want, to convert the way that they want, to run their appointments the way that they want, to brand, to market, to advertise the way in which they want as an independent contractor, indi uh, individual business owner. You get this as a solo agent. So those are some, pro uh, some pros. So let's talk about the cons of a solo agent now at a brokerage by themselves right after they get licensed. Number one, at the forefront of this, uh, I couldn't think of anything more dangerous than a brand new licensee at a brokerage with an environment that has no environment. This is not a, 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 a video or content around one brokerage being better or worse than another, but just traditionally speaking, generally speaking, if you take eight out of 10 brokerages and you walk your rear end in there, what you're going to find is a whole lot of nothing. There's not going to be a whole bunch of people there prospecting with a thriving sales environment. It's going to be quite the opposite. You can walk into these massive brokerages with eight, 10,000 square feet and say, hello, is anybody here? And it'll be tough to find somebody because there isn't anyone there. The agents aren't in the office, generally speaking. Okay, I can just hear somebody right now in the comments. Well, with my brokerage, blah, 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 blah. We got, okay, I'm talking about generally speaking. Go drive and visit 100 brokerages and 80% of them are graveyards. There's nobody in there. There's no prospecting happening. There's no productivity. There's no culture. There's none of that happening inside of these brokerages. So what ends up happening as a result of that is what? Bob or Sue that gets their license says, well, damn, there ain't shit happening inside the office. Let me go to my house by myself in my basement, in my underwear, and try to go and succeed all by myself. And this is why brand new agents feel like they're on an island. You hear this feedback all the time. I just feel so alone. I don't feel like I have support. Well, it's because of a lack of environment. Number two, no coaching and no accountability. Okay, let me just turn off the heat because it's getting hot in my office. Um, the truth and the reality, we're talking in, in, in generalities here. We're not talking black and white. There are some brokerages that do a good job, but most, when it comes to coaching and training, there isn't any. When they think about uh, coaching or training, they're talking about filling out a purchase agreement. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about sales skills, client acquisition, lead conversion, making money, in other words, yeah? So a brokerage business model, for the most part, is recruit, recruit, recruit. As many breathing souls with a real estate agent license get their rear ends in the company 
and let's see what sticks. Generally speaking, don't get mad. Generally speaking, that is the model of most brokerages. And because of that, there's so many people there. It's very difficult to hold everybody accountable to everything. And so there ends up being no coaching and no real accountability. Nobody checking in on you on a daily basis to make sure that you are doing the things necessary that will lead you to the goals that you've set. Number three is support. Again, some brokerages are phenomenal. They've got great support. I'm talking generally speaking. The vast majority of brokerages don't offer agents the real hands-on support. Let me give you a great example. It is extremely rare that you're going to have someone from a brokerage under a traditional brokerage model go with you physically on listing appointments. It is very rare to have somebody at a brokerage physically sit next to you in your cube, in an office, and make outbound prospecting phone calls with you. Very rare. Very rare that somebody at the company is going to help to do some uh, role play and practice, video and record your listing presentation, break down that video game film and give you real live sales feedback and coaching. Extremely rare for that ever to happen. That is the support that I'm talking about. I'm not talking about support to help you order your business cards. I think most companies can handle that. Now, let's talk about joining a team. Starting off with the pros with joining a team. The opposite is true for a team when it comes to environment. Unlike the traditional brokerage model, most teams, one of their pros is that you have a great environment. What do I mean by environment? Meaning you show up to an office every single day and you're surrounded with other real estate agents that are doing what it is that you're doing, which is prospecting, lead generation, lead follow-up, practicing your skills, treating it like a real sales environment which can be very inspiring for a lot of people. Tracking numbers, recognition, coaching sessions happening, sales boards to provide visibility because great salespeople are very competitive. And so this is the environment that a lot of people thrive on. So it's very, it's, it's very much the opposite of a traditional brokerage. This is what you get when you join a team. Number two is support. So on most teams, you get somebody to go on presentations with you, go on appointments with you, go on showings with you, make phone calls with you, do follow-up phone calls with you, uh, are there right next to you when you're doing your first price reduction with the seller. They're there right by your side to help you through that. That's real hands-on support. Number three, high levels of accountability. Teams are the profitability margins for a team is dependent on agents' ability to convert. And so in order to convert at a high level, they have to hold their agents accountable to the highest level, to the actions and the behaviors needed for an agent to convert. So accountability is very high with a team, which is a good thing because we know left on our own, right? When we leave that corporate W-2 job, we take the path of least resistance. We do as little as possible. So on a team, you're going to have visibility and accountability every day to do the things you need to do. Number four is lead generation. Most good teams have a lead generation model that you can plug into from day one that gets you productive from day one. Start getting you into some transactions, closing and selling some houses. They have a model already figured out. Number five are the systems and the tools to back up that lead generation. So a lot of them will have a lead conversion system or process or CRM or technology or tools to help you convert, to help you become more effective and efficient salesperson. Number six is structure. What time does your rear end need to be at the office? What time do we prospect? What time do we have sales meetings? What time do we have team meetings? What time do we do coaching sessions? What time are you going on your appointment? So on and so forth. So there's a structure to a business that traditionally speaking has very little structure. So let's now talk about the cons of potentially joining a team. Number one is the profit margins. We're talking about unit economics, not total income. I make the argument that most agents would make more money on a team than they would being a solo agent total. 
In this video, I'm talking about profit margins on the unit economics, one transaction compared to one transaction. Yes, I agree. Most agents would do more transactions under a team model than they would on their own as a brand new licensee. But the margins on a team are much smaller because the team needs to be profitable in order to provide all the things that they're providing to an agent. So it's like the chicken or the egg. Number two, and this is a big con uh, that I do stand behind, that most teams, not all, but most, generally speaking, are buyer business focused. You have the team leader who has a lead generation model that is based primarily on buyer internet leads. So they have a Boomtown, they have a Commissions Inc. website, something like that, that they're investing a lot of money into to generate opportunities for the agents on their team. And for the most part, it is a buyer-centric, buyer business model. Well, why is that a con, Brandon? Well, because if you build your business from day one around working with buyers, you're never going to have control over your time. You're always going to be working when your family isn't, so nights and weekends. And you'll never have control over your income because the amount of buyers you can work with in comparison to that of, 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 of a listing-based business, it's not even close. You can work with a lot more list seller listings than you can with buyers, so your income will always be limited. Number three is you're building someone else's business. Now, that's okay maybe for the first couple of years, but... Make no mistake about it. When you go work on someone's team, you're building someone else's business and not your business long-term. So let's now talk about working with a coach day one after you get your license. What are the pros? Well, accountability. So that coach is going to hold you accountable. They're gonna build out a business plan, whether that be me as your coach or a different coach. There's a lot of good ones out there. They're gonna hold, hopefully, they're gonna hold you accountable to doing the actions and the behaviors that are necessary for you to reach the income goals that you have. Because without that accountability, you probably already know this to be true, the likelihood of you putting yourself into pain or do the actions or behaviors you're looking to avoid is very, very, very low. It's very unlikely. So we need high levels of accountability. Number two, skills. If you work with a great sales coach, again, whether that be me or somebody else, this is not a pitch for you to try to hire me as your coach, but rather you to take the path that you believe is best for you to reach the goals that you've deemed most important. You work with a great coach, they're going to work on your skills. This is a skill-based business. I can tell you this with absolute certainty that once you figure out the strategy to go out there and win new clients, it all comes down to your skill set. Because once you know what to do, it won't matter if you don't know how to do it, right? In other words, if you know that you're going to go after an absentee owner as a lead source, great. You have the knowledge. I could walk you through step by step by step by step. But as soon as you pick up the phone and have a conversation with that potential prospect or lead and you have no skills, you simply won't get results. So it all comes down to skills. Number three is primarily if you uh, work with a coach who believes in a listing-based business, you can have a listing-focused business from day one. You could have a business from day one that is focused primarily on listings, which means you have control over your time, your income, your schedule. You can work a five-day work week and make a multiple six-figure income as a brand new real estate agent which is great. Number four, it is the highest income opportunity, meaning if you work with a coach from day one, we already know that agents that are in coaching tend to make the most amount of money per agent, right? Because of some of the things we're talking about right now versus an agent being on their own. So you can, most of the time when an agent is in coaching, their income overall year over year is higher than that of an agent that is not in coaching. So let's talk about the cons of working with a coach from day one. And number one, and really the only con I can think of is the out-of-pocket investment in yourself. A lot of new real estate agents, it isn't the money that is the problem, although they say it is, it's more of the mindset. Well, I can't afford a coach. 
to which other people say, I can't afford not to have a coach. And so for a lot of new agents, maybe with a scarcity mindset who say to themselves, well, I can go work at a brokerage or go work at a, uh, a team and not have anything out of pocket per se. They're just taking a commission split when I sell a house. If I go hire a coach, I got to pull out my credit card and pay day one. And for a lot of people with a scarcity mindset can't accept that when they invest in themselves, they're shortening the learning curve. Their time frame to make more money, exponential more money is shortened dramatically when they get into a coaching relationship. But in the beginning, it's hard to see that. So what are, what are my thoughts? Well, if, if I could go back and look at all this from my own experience and seeing what other agents have done, this is me shooting you straight without any bias. I think that an agent would be best served, and I've said this in other videos before, to go and be on a team for their first six to 12 months in the business, to get a strong foundation, to see what an environment looks like, to get some transactional support. I think that is the best case scenario. Then once they leave that team, then and only then, after they've got some confidence, is to leave that team and go and open up their own business as a solo real estate agent while partnering with a coach that can help hold them accountable, do all the things that we talked about in today's video to reach the highest level of their potential. That would be phase two. And I think the worst thing a new real estate agent could do, the worst thing they could do is go get their real estate license, not join a team, not get a coach, and go and be by themselves at some random brokerage and think that they're going to succeed all on their own with no support, no accountability, no visibility, no training, no coaching, no support, no environment, and think that they're going to make it. How do I speak with such conviction? Just look at the numbers. It's a 90% failure rate within the first two years. This is mostly because agents are going to try and do this all on their own. So those are my thoughts. It doesn't make those thoughts right or wrong, good or bad. It's what I believe is best for an agent. To recap, number one, I think an agent should go work on a team for the first six to 12 months. At that point, when they have some confidence, they can go and focus on building their own business at a, at a brokerage, partnering with a coach who will hold them accountable to reaching high levels of production. So my thoughts... Doesn't mean that they are right. I'm curious to get yours. And uh, hopefully you got some takeaways or some values from the conversation today. And uh, we'll see you guys in another video very soon.